I'm gonna get in there with the rototiller and start rototilling the whole thing. It's not too muddy. Good afternoon, beautiful people. So today we got a little bit of rain and we're supposed to get a little bit more. Uh, one of the things that I've been wanting is some rain so I can see how this greenhouse does. We didn't get enough this morning to uh, even really puddle, but it was enough to where I could see where water's working its way into the greenhouse. Here, sister. Come here, I'll pull the side up so you can get in. All right, so anyways, as I was saying, man, it's humid in here. It almost feels like a greenhouse. So there's a few places where the water worked its way in, like barely enough to puddle. And that's just mainly from running down the sides and then working its way in. So this is the lowest point, kind of almost running down the middle. So really my goal today is to start getting this graded Basically, I'm just gonna pull dirt from just outside the greenhouse, put it inside, and then I'll kind of level out this side because this is the high side, put it in the low spot. Just kind of start leveling it out, getting it graded out. I probably should have done this before we put up the greenhouse, but it's not that bad. I figure it's gonna take, you know, an afternoon, me and the boys and a couple shovels, and we can get this mostly graded out. Um, really, I just need a spot for the water to go around I have a feeling that even in a really large rain event, it's not going to matter too much. So what we'll end up doing in here is anywhere we're growing, it's going to be in a bed anyways. I don't know if I'm going to do permanent raised beds in here or we're just going to do, you know, earthen raised beds where, you know, you cut out walkways and stuff like that. Uh oh, sister, you're in the ants. Yeah, I think I got them. I think you're good. Here, I'll hold you for a second. Yeah, so a little bit of dirt work in here wouldn't be too bad. Start working on getting rid of all these fire ants. All right, so on the list of things that will get done soon, but not today, is I'm gonna build end walls with, you know, man doors in them so we don't have to crawl underneath, you know, lift up a side or crawl underneath all that plastic. I've got vents ordered and that's the only thing I'm waiting on. They're supposed to be here this coming weekend. I think what we're gonna do today, what we're gonna worry about is getting earthwork, the drainage established, so I don't have to worry about uh, flooding in here. All right, backup is here. Basically what we're gonna do is just a couple feet off from here, we're just gonna start digging a trench. Not a very deep one, just to lower than the inside of there, which six inches is probably deep enough. So we'll just work our way along there and you know, just make it, make it a nice drainage spot. Uh, if it ends up being kind of a pain in the butt, I think I could get the tractor in here and just, you know, come in here and just start it with the tractor. That way all we have to do is clean out. So let me mark it out and uh, we can get digging. About a foot and a half off of the greenhouse. About two feet off. All right, I think we're all in agreement. These little manual shovels are gonna take way too long. I'm gonna go get I'm gonna go get the diesel powered shovel. I'll see if I can get on this hill. This hill's pretty steep, but I think I should be able to just get the little ditch started. I got everything marked where I want it. We just now have to make a place for the water to go. Thank you.
All right, that just took about 25 minutes to do all that. The bulk of the digging is done. We just have to pick that stuff up and put it in there and basically get it graded to where we have a nice V, a nice even V. Uh, I would like to point out, this is not what our native dirt looks like. This is uh, mostly brown. And if you look, this is the mud from, that was stuck to the bucket. That is quite a color difference. So all of this right here is all just beautiful topsoil stuff that is sloughed off from the chicken coop. Every rain we have, it just works its way down here and gets stuck in the bottom. This is what, what I've talked about, how if we don't have our beds in a protected place from the rain, all of our topsoil, all of our compost, everything eventually winds up hitting the creek and leaving. So this is a good example. All of this stuff winds up in the bottom and in winter, when all the weeds die down, a lot of the roots go with them. And that, when we have those big, big rain events in the wintertime, that's when it's the worst, because then all of this topsoil that has worked its way down the hill and is now in the bottom of all of the, uh, the valleys, eventually makes its way off onto our neighbor's property, which then circles back around into what we call the swamp, and then it leaves the property in the creek. Guess I'll get my helpers back here. I see them scattered everywhere. I'm like, oh, dad's talking again. All right, let's get a shoveling. All we have to really do is just pick up what I just busted off and chuck it, in the chuck it into the, the greenhouse. So yeah, I am very glad that I got the tractor down here and did this. This is actually a lot more digging than I was expecting. And just by doing that little bit, it might have given us enough dirt. I'm not gonna have to move a ton from that side to this side to get everything kind of raised up. So while we're digging, just under the surface, because there is grass out here, there's tons of these. These are those Japanese beetle larvae. Those things, they're gross but there are tons of them. Like, see, there's another one. Actually, that's something different. I don't know what that one is. But because there's so many grubs, we are collecting them for some grade A chicken snacks. So as we find them, we'll just throw them in a bucket. And then when we're done, we'll give them to the chickens. It's a tub of grubs. All right, we'll see how many we can get. We'll check back. All right, I think that's it for that section right now. We're gonna work on the front. I busted up some out here and we're just gonna kinda move it over there by where my canteen's sitting uh, to kinda build this up so we have a uh, little flatter of a front door. All right, while well, you guys are doing that, it's interview time. Interview time! <laughs> so, please tell me. As the viewers have noticed, why the heck are there so many bananas in our kitchen? Okay, so I have a friend who works in the produce department at one of the grocery stores here, and she texted me and she's like, hey, so I ordered too many bananas, and I have more coming tomorrow. Do you want a couple boxes of bananas at a discounted price? And I was, and they're organic. I was like, heck yes, I'll take them, because I will, we use them in like baked goods and stuff. Oh, all sorts of stuff. So I was like, just let me know how much. And she was like, 16 bucks a box. I was like, done. So I got two boxes, $32 for like more bananas than we will need for the whole year. I so think. what is that? Like 120 pounds of bananas? How big are those boxes? I have no idea. So the boys got them sliced and into the dehydrator. So I've got a whole dehydrator going with bananas for banana chips. And then which are delicious. I just put two trays of just like whole pieces of bananas in the freezer. I'll freeze them on the trays so they get solid and then put them in bags and pack them that way. And then we'll have those for smoothies. And then when the rest of these get really, really ripe, mm -hmm. I'll smash them and measure them out into portions in bags for banana bread or muffins or whatever. Love so, banana bread. Yeah. The last batch we did, which was what? Early spring? I think so, Or was yeah. it this time last year? Mm, 
I think I want to say it was early spring. I can go look at the packages. We've long since chewed through all those banana chips. Oh yeah, the banana those, chips are long. Those go on. so quick. They do. They're so tasty. So yeah, we're uh, we're happy to have more bananas. Yeah, that's nice. All right, I'm gonna get back to digging. Alrighty. All right, I think that's about as much as we're gonna do right here. Um, I've got it kind of built up. I'm gonna get in there with the rototiller and start rototilling the whole thing. That way everything's busted up and everything's like ready to go. Eventually we will move towards a no-till system. People get very, very worked up and upset about us tilling up our rock solid clay. I thought that when we made a video showing what happens to a carrot when it hits the bottom of what's movable they grow nice and nice and good in the nice fluffy dirt that you made and then when they hit the bottom where the clay is packed hard they stop or they make right angles so tilling is a requirement until we get enough humus enough organic material mixed in and then from there then we can start doing more of a no-till system it's kind of what we've done here we are starting to move into more of a system like that in all of our raised beds now that we've got the depth and we've got tons of organic matter in these beds. Now all I have to really do is just top dress. So I think I'm gonna move some stuff around in there. I'm gonna get the rototiller in there and start rototilling so I can you know, establish walkways. I think for right now, we're not gonna do permanent beds just yet. That still remains to be seen if we're gonna do that, but I still need to have the dirt to where I can actually like rake it around and get it leveled out. So I'm gonna go grab the rototiller and bring it over here and get to work. Ah, uh, look at those nice non-planted garlic beds. Since I know people will ask, no, I haven't planted the garlic yet. I got that done yesterday evening. And then we had a good amount of rain this morning and I haven't got to it. Uh, mostly because it's really wet and muddy right now and I'm just gonna wait. We're supposed to get a whole bunch of rain tonight So if tomorrow it's dried out enough by the afternoon, I can get in there and plant garlic. I will But if not, I'll just wait a couple days Yeah, this is definitely the weather to do this in. If it were sunny today, I would not be out here. It is quite warm in here. All right, I got about half of this thing done. The other half, there's a lot of grass over there, so that'll take a minute to kill. But it's a heck of a lot flatter in here. There's for sure gonna be a walkway right down the middle, and that's perfect. Because originally, right here was the bottom of the swale. It's not really a swale, they're drainage. What they did was they cut drainage ditches on contour and but they are sloped so the water drains if they were level they'd be a swale well right down the middle here this must have been the bottom originally and as dirt has sloughed off these hills it has kind of moved the bottom over that way well right here i don't know if you saw me throwing rocks all those rocks over there we're out of the middle right here for the most part, but it's real, real hard right here just from us walking already. 
and there's lots of rocks and trash. I found quite a few nails. Um, so that actually works out perfect. We can put the walkway right down the middle. There'll be a bed on this side, bed on that side. Now I can start getting it all graded out. I got a lot of grass to pull out, but I'm happy with this. This, this is gonna work real good. All right, let's go give those chickens some snacks. Look at them, look at them. They know. Okay, who's interested? Go ahead, get you one. Oh yeah. Oh, see, they're smart. They're not playing the keep away game. Just slurp them down. All right, since people are shy, here you go, ladies. That is so satisfying. I'm getting the beds somewhat established. You can kind of see the walkway starting to pop up right there in the middle. And over here, we have now got an elevation change. It's kind of hard to see with all the dirt all disturbed, but you can see that elevation change. Water will now stay on this side. I might actually push that all the way to in line with the, uh, the legs of the greenhouse, but that's a lot better. I am out of water. I'm gonna go get a drink. And I can smell some amazing smells coming out of that house, so I'm gonna go see what Meg's cooking. What you got cooking in here it smells amazing. <laughs> Just chicken in the oven right now. Are you like roasting garlic? Oh, there's garlic on the chicken. Oh my gosh, it smells amazing. I <laughs> kind of walked by the shed and I caught the the drift. Oh, I gotta go inside all of a sudden. It's just chicken seasoning on it. Hey, what are you doing? I'm drying. You're I'm drying fine. using a like a ten dollar fine point marker to scribble. Whatever. It beats screaming, huh? Yeah. And it and does. getting into stuff and yes. destroying stuff. Yes, it does. Can I see? Oh yeah, that's a nice cow. You're an artiste. Absolutely. She draws like her daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Nothing exciting yet. Yeah. Nothing exciting. I'm too early. You are Alfredo sauce, pasta, and chicken. Which is in the oven cooking. Sounds you are a mess. I know. I keep running into the plastic and it's all wet. Yeah. And then the kids were throwing dirt and it sticks to the the wet underside of the plastic. Nice. So it's like Yeah. I'm sure it's all over me. Yeah. Alright. Alright. Well, I'm gonna make a cup of coffee real quick because okay. it's still it's, early. It's still early. <laughs> All right, that dinner was amazing. Pasta is one of those things, it's like don't try to go do anything strenuous after no. pasta. So, I won't. <laughs> I think I'm gonna give that one a bath because I saw his fork go in the hair at yeah. some point. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. yeah. B-A-T-H, you know what that is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, we're gonna wrap it up right here. So we will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.